people who have uh, continuing expertise about capacity and what can be done there. In this country, this country we can only guess has been riveted by what has been going on in the Persian Gulf as we have waited collectively for the countdown to what turned out to be a war after all, a war called Operation Desert Storm. NBC's Keith Morrison tonight has been taking a look at how America has been watching and listening and waiting and praying. Tom, we, uh, we, we certainly, Tom, expected something might happen, but yet when it happened today, a lot of people didn't quite know what to think. It, it, it hit them in the stomach. There was that kind of reaction that comes when great or terrible events occur. We sat very quietly and looked at television screens and didn't quite know what to say at the beginning. Here's what we found. Everywhere, though they knew it was coming, was a kind of shock. Well, actually, I heard it on my car radio. Then came on in here and just watched it on the news. People gathered around places where information could be had, any place, trying to comprehend what was happening. First reactions? It's a tragedy. It's a, it's a bad thing that happens. And, uh, it's a bad thing, actually. And I feel, I feel sad for the whole thing. Well, there's nothing really we can do right now. I just hope that there aren't any many casualties on our side. And all we can do is just watch the news right now. Just pray. At a military base east of Los Angeles, troops preparing for service in the Gulf heard the radio. Listen, silent. Action around Baghdad. Apparently, there's anti-aircraft fire going on. And then this from an officer. I'm sorry it happened because there's going to be a lot of innocent people die because of one man. From an enlisted man. Well, it was uh, one of my worst fears, but yeah, you know, it's come true, and now we have to face it. In San Francisco, opponents of the war heard the news and were furious. All we need to do is stop the war! And even as they began to march, a screaming headline hit the streets. And by nightfall, downtown San Francisco rang with the shouts of demonstrators saying, this is wrong. We say no! I think we should pull the troops out now. I think this is the biggest mistake Bush has made. In Albuquerque, Rosemary Brackett, with a son in the Gulf, spoke from the other side of a wide spectrum. Oh, I think they should be su supported 1,000, 1 million percent. And those protesters just drove me... I was so angry with those protesters. In Los Angeles, Al and Norma Jacobs, whose son is now at war, spoke sadly about a conflict they publicly opposed and now hope will end quickly. Uh, I don't really think the peace demonstrations hurt him. I was for a peaceful solution to the war. But uh, since the war started, there's nothing I can do but support the, uh, the effort right now. This day has been hardest, of course, for the families, for mothers whose very human feelings are now in such a crisis. Moms are here to try to help and make things better. This mom can't make this any better. And that's the hardest thing. I feel bad that I can't help people. And this was the first day, first hours, during which nerves and stomachs were rolling for many. They took what comfort they could. That last was a picture from an all-night prayer vigil which is being held in Pasadena. We sent our cameras out throughout the western United States, but there was reaction obviously all across the country. We have all been riveted by what has gone on. And we have still disagreed, even after the decision by President Bush, after the announcement that war had begun. There was a clash between anti-war and uh, pro-administration demonstrators in Washington. There were demonstrations in Los Angeles, demonstrations uh, uh, around the campus of UCLA, and reports that tomorrow UCLA students will go on strike. So the anti-war feeling has not disappeared, and yet as the day progressed, Tom, you could see that public opinion about what had happened was changing rapidly continues to change rapidly uh, one gets the impression again as we get reports back from our crews but where it's going to go tomorrow i guess heaven only knows we'll just have to watch keith morrison thank you very much uh, that is reflective i'm sure of the feelings in the country a wide range of emotions everything from people saying this is something that we must do to people reacting with shock and horror but now the operation does continue before too long we should be getting some intelligence assessments i would think They'll be able to get some satellite photographs out from there. They'll be able to make some visual, I would think, inspections as well of what is going on in those areas where there were some crucial military sites that were attacked. Command and Control Center, CNC, we've been using that phrase again and again. That's generally a bunker. It's generally where the people who run the Iraqi military operations would be located with all of their electronic gear. They want to shut that down so there is confusion in the field. 
So those forces that are out there won't know what to do, A, and B won't know whether they have been cut off from the rest of the world altogether. In Saudi Arabia, NBC's Arthur Kent and Mike Betcher standing side by side now with an update.